be fruitful. Welcome to another session as we discover the fascinating world of the starfish. And this time it is going to be really interesting because it's about money and work. We call this Kingdom Economics, the rediscovery of Kingdom Economics. It is an interesting insight at least to find out that Jesus was speaking more about money and work than about heaven and hell. Almost as if it is important. <laughs> And what we have found out so far is that the way we deal with money and work, with the things of this world, demonstrate clearly beyond the shadow of any doubt where our priorities live. In other words, if you tell me how you deal with money and work, I tell you what you really believe. <laughs> in other words, our behavior in the area of finances and how we deal with work and things is the best and probably the quickest and safest thermometer of our true spirituality. In other words, if we look at how Christians deal with the things that God has been giving us, then we know to what degree our priorities are aligned with the kingdom of God. Now, one of the most amazing things throughout church history, throughout church history was that not only uh, was the gospel of the kingdom taken away from the Christians and the apostolic prophetic foundations. It was also the financial revolutionary system that Jesus has been living and preaching in this world. And people basically said, now we have advanced, we have evolved, we have become better. We are not like these funny people in the early church who even shared all material possessions. Today, we are far from that. We have social security now, we have insurance, we don't need these things anymore. But funny enough, it seems that the message that Christians have to the economic world is not at all powerful. It almost seems as if we have become one and the same with the world. The Bible quite clearly speaks about two systems, black and white, the domain of darkness and the kingdom of God. In the domain of darkness, uh, one of the classical cities that uh, symbolically uh, model it is the city of Babylon. That's why we call it a Babylonian system, if you wish, a materialistic uh, concept of buying and selling and prostituting yourself on the market. And if that kind of uh, system runs, everything becomes shaped by Babylon or shaped by the spirit of the market. Jesus once said, did he, you cannot serve God and mammon. You will either hate the one and love the other, but you cannot do both. But many people believe that you can actually do both. You can dance at two weddings at the same time. Do kind with mammon and do kind with God and somehow come out looking good. It's not true. And one of the things is that I believe the devil has been very effectively been lying to the Christians about the radical economic system that God has brought into this world. If you look at it from this perspective, we could say if there is the fallen world and there is the kingdom of God opposite of each other, imagine like a little a table, uh, then one thing in the world is what is its highest value? What's the world all about? What's the biggest thing in this world? And the answer is it's the maximization of gain. Make money and make a lot of it. That's what it is. And if you look into the kingdom, What's the biggest value there? And it surely is not to make money and to make a lot of it. The biggest of all is love. <laughs> so you have love on the one side and you have maximization of gain on the other side. In the world, in order to make as much money as possible, you have to have an operation system that basically makes sure that you get as much money as possible. And that's called competition. You need to compete with others, be faster, quicker, and more colorful, and more in the face of others, quicker at the market than others, so that you have a bigger and better share of it. In the kingdom of God, the operation system that maximizes love, not money, 
is selfless service. <laughs> that you serve others without having a self-interest in it. Selfless service. This is the highest value, if you say, if you wish, in the kingdom. So you have two different systems. One is about maximizing gain through competitiveness, and the other one is to maximize love by multiplying selfless service. And therefore, if you try to mix those two things, it is almost like mixing water with oil. You can try to mix it, but you need a lot of energy until you become tired. Many people, if, if you watch it, specifically after the financial crisis that we have experienced, they want to look at Christianity to save Babylon from sinking. So the business world talks about flat structures, about vision, about mission, about values, about ethical marketing, and so on and so forth. And so they want to use things from the kingdom to support Babylon. I don't think it works long term. And some people in the Christian circles, they want to use business strategies, be more competitive, have your logo in the face of the people, be more punchy, be more strategic, and they want to maximize Membership, maximize churches, maximize influence, maximize radio time, maximize sales. And do not recognize that they use Babylonian principles and think they advance the kingdom of God. It does not work that way. So the best and initial insight into the whole subject of kingdom, kingdom economics is this. There are two economical systems in this world. One is a Babylonian system that the whole world is functioning under, and the other one is the financial system of the kingdom. I told already that when Jesus came uh, as a king, he established a kingdom, and every kingdom that wants to really run well needs to have a financial system, a banking system, a way how to deal with money and work and things. And quite obviously, uh, the early Christians have demonstrated exactly the message that Jesus brought with him. Uh, however, if you look at today's behavior of many who call themselves Christians, you basically see that their lifestyle, their way of dealing with money and work, smells only of one thing, of the very same thing that you find in the world. It is not an alternative. Many Christians build on the same materialistic false securities that the world builds on and believe they are safe. That's called the deceit of riches. <laughs> And that's what many are doing. And that's what many financial advisors are even telling you. Have you seen a, a TV series on win your financial freedom? And what it is, is how to give, uh, how to make a tricky business deal in such a way that you have a million on the account and you live off the interest happily ever after. And you're financially free and independent. Friends, this has nothing to do with the kingdom. In the kingdom, Freedom is not that you can do what you want, with whom you want, if you want. Freedom actually is a close voluntary relationship with your liberator, Jesus Christ. Where you are not free to do as you want, but you are actually free to do as you should. And that's a total different kind of liberty. And even in the kingdom of God, uh, we are not free to do as we want because we are the king's property. And we want to look a little bit into this one because if you look at the financial behavior of the church right now, which we don't really want to go into details, I can basically say with great confidence that almost every financial principle that Jesus has ever established, we have overstepped, we have broken, we have ignored it. In our ignorance, we have done the opposite and thought we are normal. No wonder we have hardly anything to say into the economic questions of this world. And if you look at the world around us, when they wake up in the morning until they go to bed at night, they worry about one thing and one thing only. Is there enough money? Do I work in such a way that I'm paid well enough and can I get more? It's a mindset driven by two spirits. By fear, will there be enough? Will I make it? And by greed, more is always better. If I have a million, what about two million? So the whole idea is driven by fear and by greed. And if Jesus speaks of mammon, I think he basically doesn't speak just of a financial system. He speaks of a demonic spirit. Think of mammon as the finance minister of Satan, <laughs> who is out there to give you a false gospel. If you have money and if you have a job, you don't need God. 